Hello, and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Ariel. We are at Garyville I-64 KOA. So far, I like this park. They put down pebbly rocks all the way around, and the sights are huge. You can fit. Look how big the site is. Goes all the way over there to all the way over here. And it's perfectly level. <laughs> Perfect. This left and right. Don't need to level at all. It's wonderful. Okay, water, heaven. Don't know when. Good water pressure. It's a brand new. It's a brand new pedestal. Okay, so it's right here in the middle of the site. So I've lined it up where the sewer is. Right there. So it's a good site. I like this site. All right, I check in. They do have a restaurant that is open Friday through Mondays. I think it is. So tomorrow I'll probably be eating in the restaurant. It's open from from 4 to 8 for dinner. All right. So, I'm going to set up now. All right, this is something new. This is the internet speed. All right. Here we are at Lincoln's Boyhood Home in Kentucky. And let me read to you what this national park is. The site of the farm where Abraham Lincoln spent 14 years of his life. This memorial and replica of the famous log cabin shows us where our 16th president developed his sense of honesty, his belief in education and learning, and his compassion for his fellow human beings. Well, the visitor center is closed, but we're gonna go, there's a outline of where one of the cabins were. I'm gonna go look for it. It's a little bit of a hike, but it'll be good cardio. Hopefully it's not on any hiking towards the Thomas Lincoln farm. It's a little it's a little short hike. So we're going that way. <laughs> well they were kind enough to put stamps here in their information center, even though the building is closed. Mm. This is where the cabin stood. This is where the cabin stood that Lincoln grew up in. It's a one room studio. Okay, from my estimation, this can't be larger than 200 square feet. Maybe 150. And here are some cabin replicas during his day. So this is what they think the log cabin used to look like. Here we are at George Rogers Clark National Historical Park. <laughs> now, this classical memorial commemorates the capture of Fort Sackville from British Lieutenant Governor Henry Hamilton and his soldiers by Lieutenant Colonel George Rogers Clark and his frontiersmen in February 25, 1779. The fort's capture assured U.S. claims to the frontier west of Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. And this Clark is related to the Lewis and Clark that did go out towards Oregon. Interesting fact. Didn't know any of this. Oh, and we also got our stamp. But there has, all, there has been a church there since 
1732. And, and during the War of 1812, the third Fort Knox sat on this location. So uh, they found remnants of one of the forts when they were excavating for this building up in the corner, uh, but they did not, they didn't have the tools to really determine which, which of the forts. So right on the Wabash River, which as you saw in the film, it flooded, it created this huge lake south of us. And that's what Clark and his men had to cross oh. from Illinois. So it's like a four to five mile lane. We've got one safety thing that you guys have to come and watch, and that's that black marble that goes around in front of the bench. Watch that because then everyone trips on it. So oh, okay. It, it, it's, it's a hazard. I'm always looking up. I actually had somebody you know, call an ambulance on somebody. <gasps> Dead serious. That would be my spouse. If you'd like to go to the Chronological Coast of Kentucky clockwise, if you'll have any questions or come again. Hey, these are the postcards. <laughs> What's that? These are the no, postcards. That's what's on the postcards. <laughs> I've we, already seen them. We were trying to get a uh, collage of all those. And, and I think some of them down helps. They're not getting us a lot of money much unless we can help This is the back part of the park. And today is Sunday, so which means everyone cleared out. And I'm the only one here for the evening, which is wonderful. And there is no freeway noise whatsoever, even though the freeway is maybe two miles down. All you can hear is the rustling of trees, which is so nice. This is where you go to check in. The staff is very friendly. And there is actually a little bit of a camping store inside. Now, on the other side of this building, which is right over there, is a restaurant, which is open Friday Saturday and Sunday uh, the food is mediocre and the service is really slow so if you don't feel like driving anywhere if you're here during the weekend it's a good place to eat it's a good alternative as opposed to cooking so would we stay at this park again the answer would be a yes we would stay here again it's a nice park it's quiet at night wonderful and they have um, a lot of activities there is a laundry room I didn't check it out because I didn't do laundry I don't use the bathrooms because I have my own but the 50 amp sewer good water pressure electric the pedestal was very brand new was brand new so don't know if this is a new park or they've just been doing remodeling but whatever they're doing you're doing a good job. Here we are at Lincoln's Birthplace Memorial. In the fall of 1808, Thomas and Nancy Lincoln settled on the 340-acre Sinking Spring Farm. On February 12, 1809, Abraham Lincoln was born in a one-room log cabin. Here, the Lincolns lived and farmed before moving to a land a few miles away to Knob Creek. So, hello from Lincoln's birthplace. Here we are at the birthplace memorial. And it's 56 steps up to the building for how many years he lived Sucks. yes <laughs> drive all the way from nevada to see this nevada too you too yeah las vegas <laughs> and this is their well water those that don't know the Lincoln Birthplace Memorial does have RV parking. It's got room enough for about three, three to four RVs. Here we are at Mammoth National Cave. And this is the, I got my stamp. And according to the book, 
This is the most extensive known cave system in the earth, which lies beneath the sandstone ridges of this park's surface. More than 350 miles of passageways have been surveyed, yet the caves largely, largely remain a mystery. Geologists estimate that the oldest part of Mammoth Cave began forming 10 million years ago. Now, as of today, they say there is over 400 miles of cave system down there. So I did book the tour, which begins in about 20 minutes. According to the lady over there, the park ranger, underneath the information center, it is only 62 steps down to the cave level. So that's 62 steps up. That's almost two stories up, so which is manageable for me. Uh, which will essentially wipe me out for the rest of the day. So once I do this little tour thing, which they say is about an hour and a half. It's a self-guided tour, but they are limiting the number of people per 15 minutes. So let's, let's see how long I can last in this thing. Oh, and there is no restrooms down there. And this is the parking lot to the Mammoth Cave system. They do have RV parking all the way in the back over there. So if you do have an RV, you can park your RV here without a problem to do it as a day trip. Okay, so I brought a, I bought a sweater because the one I have isn't really that thick. But I don't really want it to be too thick. They said it's 52 degrees down there, so which is comfortable. All right, come along. All right, good morning, everybody. You should all be here for the 11 o'clock cave tour. If you have a time different than that on your ticket, you will have to wait until whatever that time is on your ticket before you can head down into the cave. My name is Ranger Dominique. I'll be giving you all your safety talk today. The safety talk is mandatory, so thank you all for showing up. It's your responsibility to listen to everything that I have to say and then abide by it while you're in the cave today. That will ensure that you can have the best possible time on your tour. Before I start the safety talk though, I am going to go over some logistics of your tour just so you know what you're about to get yourself into. This is a two mile cave tour. The two mile trail will fork off into two different directions. The right side will be about half a mile in total. The left side will be about a mile and a half in total. Both sides do dead ends, so you will have to turn around at some point. There will most likely be a ranger at the fork telling you which way to start off with. Uh, just to help people spread out into the cave a bit more but whenever you're done with whatever side you start off with you can go off into the other side all right so for your safety talk like i said you have two miles of trail today in the cave you also have about 130 stairs the stairs you'll find at the entrance you have to go down the stairs to get into the cave and then up the stairs to get out of the cave if you have any heart or respiratory problems trouble walking long distances climbing stairs or any other health concerns Please consider your limitations before heading into the cave. If a medical emergency were to arise, it can and usually does take several hours for help to get down there. This is a self-guided tour, so you do get to go at your own pace. There are benches along the trails that you are more than welcome to take advantage of if you feel the need to. The cave is dimly lit. Sometimes the trails can be uneven and sometimes they can be wet. Make sure you pay attention to where you're walking. Stay on the trails at all times and make sure you walk on the right hand side. That will leave the left hand side available for people walking in the opposite direction of you. Uh, when you're leaving the cave today, you're gonna walk across some squishy black mats that have a combination of soap and water in them. We have you walk across them to clean off the bottom of your shoes because we have what is called white nose syndrome here. It's a fungus that grows in the cave soil and it only affects bats, but since we've had it here, We've lost about 90% of our bat population. We don't want to spread it to other areas that you may visit that don't have it yet, so we just have you clean off the bottom of your shoes at the end of your tour, and then you'll be good to go. If you see a bat in the cave today, make sure you do not touch it or harass it in any way, shape, or form. They're just trying to live their best lives in the cave. That's their home where they're visitors, so we want to respect that. If for some reason a bat touches you in the cave, 
find someone that looks just like me in there but it's not me, tell them what happened and then they will give you further instructions on what you will need to do. Hey, they don't tell you the part where you have to actually descend down. So this going up might be a little bit problematic for me. But we'll see. We're going to take it really slow. Okay, this little slope here, they didn't really mention this. <laughs> this may be problematic when I come back up. However, they do have benches along the way, which is good. So I can sit and rest. This is humongous. Oh. We're inside the cave. We're doing the longer one, which is half a mile in and half a mile out. So it's one so it's one mile. <laughs> I'm not doing the other the other side. I'm my stamina is already gone. But this is absolutely worth the visit. It's absolutely beautiful down there. I did the half mile in, half mile out with a lot of stairs. I still have to do the slope going up to the visitor center, but definitely worth the trip. However, my stamina is gone. We're back to rest. So it took me almost three hours. And that's with resting. So this is doable with a heart condition. As long as you take it really slow. They only have two benches down there. The rest of the other benches are up here. Okay, there are two cemeteries here in Mammoth National Park. This is one of them. I, I don't know why I like cemeteries. They're a nice park and there's no screaming children around. Some of the, all of these date back to Looks like they date back to 1907 to 1916 to 1900s, early 1900s. Nice and peaceful here. We are at Horse Cave KOA, site number 93. It's at the end. And what I like about this particular site is our windows are on the maintenance side. And this is essentially my view for the next couple of nights. It's really nice. It's all uphill <laughs> from here. They're, they do have a Wi-Fi tower all the way up there. However, the Wi-Fi signal is absolutely horrible. There is no internet here to say, uh, there is no Wi-Fi here, at least not on this side of the park. Oh, look at that. They have another Wi-Fi tower. One, two, three spaces away from me, and there's no signal. There's no, uh, if you do come to this park, don't expect, do not expect any Wi-Fi, even though they do advertise that they have it. They don't. The other thing about this park that I don't really care for is that my site is littered with cigarette butts. So I don't know who is doing their maintenance here, but they need to start picking up their trash. The people that stay here need to pick up their trash, and the people that work here, they need to start picking up litter from the campsites when people check out this is I, I I don't care for it I've already picked up a dozen myself and they're not even my cigarette butts when, you know what when I used to smoke 
I didn't litter my cigarette butts on the ground for someone else to come pick it up. It's a setup, 50 amps, water, sewer. It's kind of not in the same location. It's kind of staggered. Another thing about this park is I'm at the last row and you can see the freeway right over here. There's the freeway, Highway 65. At night, the traffic does die down, so I didn't hear any traffic noise whatsoever. Didn't hear any trains, so that's a good thing. Would I stay at this park again overnight? Yes. I'm here for four days. I probably would not have stayed in this park knowing how horrible the Wi-Fi is. But it's a good park. Overnight, two nights, it's a yes. Longer than that, I would say have to say no. And again, they need to pick up the litter that's in the campsite. Okay, as far as trash goes, you leave it at the end of your RV site and they come and pick it up. That's about it, they don't pick up litter. The other thing also, as far as leveling goes, not very level. I'm very high on this end. In fact, I had to add blocks so the stabilizers can touch the ground and I'm very low on that end and two blocks over here to level me up. So the site's not too level, but we'll deal with that part. It's the litter that I don't like. The nice thing about this park is it's one exit away from Mammoth Caves, so it does make it very convenient. Here we are at Fort Donaldson. National Battleground. The first North's major victory of the Civil War came with the surrender of Fort Donaldson on February 16, 1862. After two days of hard fighting, General Buckner felt compelled to accept General Grant's ultimatum for an unconditional and immediate surrender. Okay, so this is what happened here in this battlefield. River placed Grant under a national spotlight. His continued successes are their oxygen. All right, it's really nice here at Fort Donaldson that the they give you this, this phone number right here and you just drive around the area and you enter in the number that you're at and they'll tell you what it's about <laughs> or you can just keep driving it's really cute it's a really good idea i like this they should do this in a lot of the national parks you are now at stop number four on our driving tour the confederate river batteries during this time in history most roads were not paved and winter travel was difficult as roads became knee deep in mud from the heavy rains and constant travel of marching soldiers horses cannon and wagon wheels we suggest that you stop and take a closer look at these batteries while here you may also catch a glimpse of our resident bald eagles which proudly call fort donaldson home Okay, since we have the trailer jacked up so much in the back, I'm actually going to grease the stabilizers. Thank you for watching. Bye.